Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 141. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, guys. Welcome back one more time. Uh, We're going to do it again. You know, we just did the previous episode where you got the opportunity to hear and listen to some of the questions that we talk about inside the membership area in our live sessions. Uh, I'm going to give you another dose and taste of that today. See how you like it and uh, let us know. Give us some comments uh, because I want to make sure that these questions are actually helping you. And most importantly, if you've got a question, become a member. Send it in. We'll talk about it. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hopefully everything is going well. Uh, we are here in the studio again, and everything is working. Isn't that exciting? Uh, welcome to another episode of Q&A with Jay. I'm here to answer your questions. I am Jay. If this is your first time here or you're a brand new Cashflow Core member, welcome. If you are not yet a brand new member, you're definitely going to want to pay attention because you're probably going to want to make sure that you keep access to this particular show because we do intend to keep it going, but for our members only. For those of you joining us for the first time, I, uh, real estate investor, been doing this a few years. Uh, We've started out squatting in bank-owned property, et cetera. Uh, Did not have a decent credit score. We had a credit score of 398. Couldn't put $75 together and didn't have any real estate experience. So today we've done hundreds of transactions in multiple different states. And uh, we have many hundreds of units across multiple different states and uh, doing all kinds of things, cell phone tower, commercial buildings, et cetera. All of this stuff is made possible because Uh, of starting and learning in real estate. And, you know, what we try to do here is to help you become a bigger, better, better entrepreneur that happens to use real estate and produce cash flow in various different ways. Hopefully that helps you. And if you are watching somewhere other than on cashflowdiary.tv or inside the members area, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you head over to cashflowdiary.tv so you can participate in the chat room because I got the chat room up in front of me so that I can catch as many of your questions as you have the courage to type. And we also have a number of questions and a number of interesting, we even have a commercial deal someone sent in today. So we're going to be talking a little bit about some commercial questions, it looks like. We're uh, And I have no idea what the other questions are because I typically don't look at the questions ahead of time uh, before we get started. So uh, one of the things I want to make sure that everyone's aware of, we do have a podcast in iTunes. That podcast in iTunes, we have new episodes every Monday, every Thursday. Uh, We are there to help you introduce yourself to new entrepreneurs that have the ability to help you grow your cash flow because you can learn from their stories. Sometimes they have a a service. Sometimes it's just the way that they think that you need to glean. You need to understand how an entrepreneur thinks so that you have the ability to go out there and do the same thing and duplicate with your ideas because I believe you guys have great ideas. We're just going to do our best to help you get them out there. Now, I briefly mentioned uh, the whole members only benefit. And some of you, I see you in the chat room, you're like, what is he talking about? So what I want to do is just to remind everybody what we're doing. So for those of you watching for the first time, if you've ever said to yourself, I wish I could find a place to learn how to, you know, start, get started in real estate. You're like, man, how do I get started in real estate? What do I do first? Uh, or you're feeling like, man, I, I know how to find a deal, but I don't know where the money's coming from. Or you're like, you know what? I know where the deal's coming from. I know where the money's coming from. I'm ready to transition to something bigger. 
uh, like uh, apartment buildings or and how do I have these conversations with these investors? Well, all of that is included in our cash flow core membership. It's just based upon the same techniques and strategies that I use every day. And what I mean by I use every day is last week I was using the very same techniques that all of our members have access to uh, through some of our various courses. So when you log in uh, now, when you click over here to courses, for those of you that have upgraded to the Cashflow Core membership, you'll see you'll have access to our Deals at Discounts course, which is the beginning of how to get started. If you want to learn how to raise capital, well, we've got, looks like, 15.8 hours of video as well as the homework and everything else that goes along with that so that you have the ability to understand how that goes. I'm going to teach you the marketing techniques, the number one marketing technique that we use. I'm going to teach you how to sell it, how to generate the leads, how to negotiate the deals, put it all together together to make it work for you. Now, what I was referring to is that there's live lessons. These live lessons, what we're about to see actually is a, <laughs> uh, we're going to see me right now inside the little video, right? So we, the live lessons is the area where we do our broadcasting. This is where this show will be moved to in the not too distant future. You will not have access to this, uh, from a live standpoint unless you are one of our Cash Flow Diary core members so that you can stay abreast of everything that we're learning, I'm learning as I go out there into the marketplace. And most importantly, we can give you the, the most timely answers that we know of available uh, on the Internet today from people who are actually doing what it is that we're talking about here. And that's the whole thing. You got to always remember that information is only relevant uh, relative to its timeliness. So if you said, ah, I learned about real estate investing even six months, nine months ago, you're probably behind on a few couple of things and you need to get caught up. So you got to stay plugged in to the show and to everything else that we're doing so that we can make sure that as your real time questions come up, you get real-time answers, and that's exactly what this show is for, is for us to serve you in every way we possibly can. So hopefully that works out very, very well for you. And uh, just also understand that if you say to yourself, you're like, wow, that looks like a pretty good membership, I promise you, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of everything that's in here uh, between our tools and our community and all these other things that we've got going on. Uh, and if you want, you probably see a banner just below this video that allows you to start a free trial. So we have a free trial for you. In fact, you start the free trial, you come over when you, once you come in, you'll actually have access to the audiobook of Cashflow Diary 10 Steps to Creating Wealth to Any Economy. Uh, and you'll have the ability to understand the bonus material. In fact, inside the uh, audiobook, there's bonus material inside the audiobook that's not printed, er, printed? No. That's not published anywhere else. It's not in the print book. I don't even think it's in any podcast. It's nowhere else but only in the audiobook so that you guys have access to, again, lots of exclusive content. And we're still uploading content. Wait till you guys see what we got coming for you here in a couple of weeks, especially if those of you who are concerned about getting in front of more capital and you want to know how to do it quickly, you're going to really like where we're headed and what we've got planned for you. So anyway, that's just a quick synopsis of why you probably want to take us up on the trial offer and just go ahead and get started there if you haven't already. And, but most importantly, understand that after February 3rd, the, the Q&A with Jay, uh, it, it's easier for us to try to educate a smaller, you know, 1,500, 2,000 membership than it is trying to educate the entirety of the internet. <laughs> okay. There's definitely more focus. We can pour more into a fewer people to make that happen. To that effect, the number of you, uh, especially those of you who are already pre-existing customers, uh, before January 1st of this year, if you were pre-existing customer before January 1st of this year, you received an email with a special offer that will expire in 11 days. We, it, it, it will go away in 11 days. So if you want to take advantage of our thank you for being a customer before January 1st of this particular year and be able to take advantage of all the things that you're currently looking at, you're absolutely going to need. That's the only link. You cannot go to the website. There is no promo code. You have to click the link in the email that you were sent in order to make it happen. If for some reason you're like, Jay, I want that email, but I don't have it. Here's what you need to do. Whoops. You need to send an email to info 
at cash flow diary cash flow diary dot com info at cash flow diary dot com because you guys um, want to make sure that we carry you over give you more uh, as much information as we possibly can so that way you have an opportunity to make sure that you get your special link as well and we will send that out to you so please understand uh, there's a, a lot of you, there's a few of us, and we're doing our best. We're doing this because we have so much content to, to create, and that's, oh, sorry, that's already created. And we want to make sure that everybody has the tools to do things like, you know, SEP has done and others. We, we, again, I think I've said this on the last episode, we were able to retire two individuals last year. That's very exciting. I am looking for who's going to do it this year. And my intent is to focus on a smaller group of people. And you might not think 2,000 people is a small group of people, but it's smaller than the entirety of the internet, if you think about it. And we're going to focus on those individuals. And from those special 2,000, we're going to get to the point to where we have the ability to retire people on a consistent basis. So um, Susan is asking a question. Is this replacing the foundation membership? Yes, that is correct. It is replacing the foundation membership. So many of you remember the founders membership. And if you were one of those customers, we are grandfathering all of you guys in at the old pricing, but get giving you a ton more stuff for the same price. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and there's no more different levels and programs. That's exactly, Susan, what we're trying to eliminate is to have it all very simple. You're going here. We have one new Facebook group. We have one membership. It's simple at this most basic level. Now, yes, we'll still be doing mastermind groups, and I know some of you are waiting and wanting, when are we going to do raising private capital again? Okay, uh, just pay attention. Hang on. We've got a lot of work that we're still doing, transitioning systems, all this other stuff, okay? We haven't forgotten. Nonetheless, I'm just saying that I get it. Yes, we'll still be doing the mastermind groups, and yes, we will still be doing some of our Saturday events uh, as well so that you can get some master training So, uh, in, on any one specific topic. So just keep that in mind. Those things are not going anywhere. We're just trying to consolidate the product offering, make it simpler, and more importantly, it'll appeal to more of your interest because I knew as I grew as a real estate investor, I started out just trying to get deals done and then eventually I got tired of passing them off and I wanted to keep them, but I needed to learn to raise capital. And then eventually it was like, well, I could raise capital, but I, I could raise more capital than a single family house could hold. So it's like, what am I going to do next? And that's where the multifamily and the commercial and the cell phone towers and blah, 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 blah. So the goal is to help you guys grow all the way through that process and to give you everything that I have up here so that you can use it out there and go and build your cash flow your way and, and make some great things happen for yourself. So instead of having 15 different programs, we got one, <laughs> one program done. And you can click the banner below for a complimentary trial as well as a complimentary copy of the audiobook free for seven days, $97 a month thereafter. Uh, but if you were a you know, customer prior to January 1, you're going to want to click your link or send in that email. I think I got through all of the announcements. Scott, is that all of them? Yay. Thank you. Scott says yes, so I can keep going now. <sighs> all right. So um, Joshua has a question. Joshua says he just started the wholesaling course today. Yay. And I was doing my first day's homework, and I came across a 76-unit apartment complex that passed the first two tests. That's good. I want to contact the seller, but I don't know what to ask. The seller is asking for $1.2 million, but it does not need a lot of renovations. After using Rentometer, I found that fully rented, this property would bring in over $34,000 monthly. What do I need to do next in order to move at the speed of instruction? Well, um, okay, so you want to go there, Josh? I like the game you're playing. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to, if you're watching, especially if you're watching live, you're going to pick up the phone right now. And if you pick up the phone right now and do this right now, you'll be able to type in the chat box uh, the responses that you get, and I can respond to you right now as to what you need to do. So with that being said, you're going to pick up the phone right now. You're going to call the seller and just ask them if it's for sale because that is the first and most basic question. You don't know if the, the building is still for sale. After the building is still for sale, you want to find out why. You got to begin to find out the story and then you're going to set an appointment to go see it. So that's the goal of that initial phone call. Is it for sale? What's the story? Go see it. Period. Is it for sale? 
find out the story, go see it. If it's not near you, it's, is it for sale? Uh, what's the story? Can you send someone to see it? <laughs> okay, those are the things that we're talking about here, is that you've got to get that person on the phone. So that's going to be your next step. If you're ready to write the offer or ready at least to begin the conversation, then great. And always remember, Josh, a offer is just an invitation for a conversation. Nothing more, no pressure. That should be relatively easy for you. I see a number of you typing some things. All right, so Andre, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Andre up in Canada, which is great. Let me see. It says, if we do wholesales across the border, yes, this is the Andre in Canada. It's awesome. Should we initially have an LLC set up first? You don't have to. Uh, what taxes will we have to pay? Oh, Good question. Also, how do we go about double closing deals if we don't have cash to close? Got it. So Andre is obviously going through getting some of our getting deals at done, uh, getting deals done at discounts information. Uh, for those of you wondering where his questions are coming from, it's actually inside our course material, which is kind of funny that my internet seems to have just stopped. I don't know why, but that's all right. So at the end of the day, the uh, when you're doing deals across any sort of borders, you're now dealing with two tax jurisdictions. And as far as the taxes that you're going to have to pay, here's what I often ask people to do is uh, when it comes to the taxes, because I'm, again, I'm not a tax guy, never have been, uh, don't necessarily want to be. Uh, but when it comes to the taxes, I'm just doing a search on the website. I think it's episode 24 of the Cashflow Diary podcast, which sounds crazy, right? Episode 24. That sounds so, so long ago. Nope, it was 25. I was off by one. You're going to contact Tom Wilwright at his office from an international, hear me clearly, from an international tax standpoint. To my knowledge, they are the absolute best I have access to in terms of crossing borders and still getting deals because there's the way that that deal is going to be treated from a uh, from a uh, capital gains or long term uh, uh, long term capital gains and or ordinary income basis in the US is going to be different and they're going to be the best uh, company that I am currently aware of in that particular area to solve that problem so I I want to answer your question but I I can't but I can lead you in the right direction on that one. And as far as how do you do a double closing deal if you don't have the cash, having the cash is irrelevant. And I'm going to explain this again one more time. All right. So when you go to the store, right? When you go to the store, the first thing you must do is walk through the door, right? If you don't actually walk through the door, you, you, it doesn't really matter. You can't buy anything from the store. The reason I'm saying this is because oftentimes when we're thinking about doing real estate using none of our own money or credit, we won't walk through the door because we don't have any money. Well, having the money, we don't need the money yet. Because even after we walk through the door, what do we have to do? We have to find what we were looking for, which we, 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 which presupposes that you had an idea of what you wanted before you went there, right? So before you went in, you said, I know what I'm looking for. Here's what I want. Does that, hopefully that makes sense. You got to find what you were looking for. And then even after you found it, you got to hope that it's in stock, right? And then once it's in stock, you're going to uh, pick it up. Like if you're going to pick it, it, it. Up. You're going to pick it up. Now, the pick it up process, what happens here is that that's very similar. That's analogous to having the property under contract. So now that I've picked up the item and it's in my hand and this is what I came here for, no one else has the ability. No one else really is going to come and take it out of my hand unless it's like that, what, tickle me Elmo around Christmas or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, then you're going to have an issue. So this is what we're talking about. You're going to pick it up. Right. And then after you've picked it up, guess what you get the privilege of now doing? You, the, you got the privilege of going back to the front and then you've got to stand in line, stand in line. So as you're standing in line, you you're just sitting there with the item waiting your turn because you you're not ready to do the last step yet, which is check out. Right and actually purchase 
the item. But even inside the checkout process, the first thing when you stand in the line, it takes time for them to ring you up. They got to verify, did you get everything you were looking for? Is there anything missing? Verifying the pricing, all that other stuff has to happen. And then they go, hey, how would you like to pay? So what ends up happening for most of us is that we collapse all this. We won't even walk through the door, i.e. write the offer. We won't even begin that process because we don't know how we're going to check out. Well, we don't need to check out yet. Now, see, in a retail example, the time from part one to part five, this could be minutes or seconds, especially if you're running in the store real fast. But when it comes to real estate, this is easily 30 60, 90, commercial, 120, 180, especially once you start talking about 1031 exchanges, etc. days from now. You don't absolutely need the money. The money does not prevent you from writing this offer. And here's the point. What a wholesaler does effectively is they write the offer and between here and here before checkout is needed, is when they learn and find the person who's going to take their place in line at the checkout. So they go through all this process, they've got this amount of time to go find the person who's gonna stand in line at checkout. So you not having the money is irrelevant. What is important is does anybody have the money and more importantly, do they know you? So what I teach and what we tend to focus on in our deals and discounts course is teaching you how to do this process as it relates to real estate investing so that you have the ability to, when you're in this period, have five to 10 people who already have said, yeah, I want what you've got so that in this process, you have the ability to get a deal done in 72 hours or less. That's what's important, Andre, this piece right here, write the offer. And if you do it the way that I've asked you to in the course, you'll already, you already know who that's going to take your places. You already know that before you even write the offer. That's if you've followed the rest of the instruction in the course material. So awesome. All right. So I see Josh is answering the question. Let's go look and see what he's got to say. Um, Josh, the seller is wholesaling the property. He has it under contract. The property needs 400000 in real innovations only of the seven units that are occupied, and the city has condemned the rest of the units due to plumbing problems. This is sounding even better. I love it. Finding problems, not properties. Now, first of all, i got to correct some of the vocabulary, Josh. I, we, when we're talking about the seller, the seller is the person on title. I don't see how a seller would be wholesaling a property. The seller, uh, you might be dealing with a different wholesaler, and that's fine, um, I want you, everyone to be dealing with the person who is on title. Okay. So the seller could be wholesaling the property or the person, you know, this is a wholesaler who's wholesaling the property. And that's going to meet the definition of what we call daisy chains. As you go through the course material, we talk about daisy chains and how to avoid them and why not to do them, blah, 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 blah. So that's my challenge right there. So he's already standing in line. That I understand. He's already standing in line, marching towards the checkout, and he's asking, can you take his place? Your answer is, well, let me go see if I can find, I, I'll stand in line for you now, but let me see if I can go find someone else. And I don't like that situation for most of the people that I work with. Uh, I, I don't want you in that situation. I want you to be what I call them, what we call seller direct. So this is a no-go for that reason. I like everything else about it. I love the condemned. I love the problem. I love the, it's about to fall apart. Dear Lord, please help. That's great. All of that stuff works out perfectly. Uh, what doesn't work out perfectly is the fact that you're not seller direct. You need to be seller direct. So uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see, as Susan says, and it's so much easier to go shopping when you have a list, too. Exactly. If you've got someone else's shopping list, they told you what they would purchase, only go buy that. That's all you're going to do. You're just going to go, okay, I'll take two of these, three of those, four of these. And then you go tell the person, hey, here you go, pay me, and you're already set to go. So hopefully that helps. Um, so, um, Andre, that should have also taken care of you as far as your double closing deals. Oh, one last thing. Um, let me show you up here. So up here uh, on this 
is you're going to use a purchase contract or a residential purchase agreement, RPA, RFC, RREPC. They're called many different things, sales and purchase agreement. You're going to use uh, the residential purchase agreement or the agreement to purchase below real estate. During this process, you're going to use typically an assignment agreement or you could use another purchase agreement, okay? Here's my point. Inside our materials, we have what we call the quick offer kit. The quick offer kit has both of these documents in there so that you have the ability to put the property under contract and sell it at the same time. So you have all of that, and I'm going to show you where that is for those of you who are already in the members area. You have the ability to go to it directly. All you're going to do is when you go over to the, your tools, you're going to click tools, and boom, right here, the quick offer kit. Bam, you're going to download that, and you're going to have both of those documents there so that you have the ability to buy the property and sell the property, uh, get to someone else. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully that makes sense, and we'll just keep going. Now, some of you, you may have noticed, like as you're clicking around, inside your system uh, that some of these items are gray. Like maybe there's a course that's gray. Maybe there's something you're like, oh, I want that, and it's gray. Specifically, uh, Income Infusion, Leap Machine, and or Ninja Negotiations. Those are not part of the core membership because uh, they're actually extra bonus days that we've done in the past that people paid a lot of money to be a part of live, and they've gotten a ton of benefit from them. Uh, but they're teaching you how to generate leads, how to negotiate the deal specifically, uh, or just the concepts of negotiations. If you want some, like, principles of negotiations, that's where Ninja Negotiation comes in from. I promise you, it'll save you money on your next car purchase. It'll save you money on your next rent uh, or, or rental agreement. It'll save you money over in many different ways, as well as income infusion. Uh, so right now, all of these are, if you already have access to them, that's great. That's wonderful. If not, we will be including the access to add these to your uh, membership if you so choose. It's not there at the moment. Uh, that's just how new we are. Uh, but it's not there at the moment. It is coming, but that's why it is gray for those of you wondering about that as well. All right. So let me see. We got that handled. We got that handled. Lots of questions. Two questions. Two questions. Where's Noreen? Yep. Noreen, what is the process of doing multifamily units in a state you're not familiar with the buyer when, when your buyer says they have an interest in it? I don't think I understand the question. The process isn't, the, the process really doesn't change. Um, that's like if you sent someone to McDonald's to pick up food for you, you're not really there. They're just picking up the food for you. I, I don't, maybe I'm not, do you guys get a different, what is she asking? Because I'm, I'm, the process is the same. Is the process any different? It's not any different. It's the exact same. You're going to do, in fact, you're going to follow this exact same pattern. You're going to walk through the door, go look at the property in terms of maybe online. You're going to walk through the door, write the uh, offer because you found what you want, and then you're going to get them to say yes. Now, or by picking it up, writing the offer, you're going to stand in line. You're going to check out. This process is the same. It never really changes. Uh, the What does change is the amount of interview time you should invest with your potential buyer. Uh, because that's a bigger dollar commitment, right? So it's one thing to say, yeah, pick me up, you know, some food on the way home and just get me, you know, I trust you, get me whatever. It's another to say, hey, how about you just buy a house for me and I'll just take the deed and I'll make the payments. Like, whoa, okay, well, so you need to be more clear and make sure they're more clear on their investor identity. So you just got to do a better job at the beginning. You can't be as lax uh, on that particular statements so that you need to understand that. Um, the, and, and for those of you also wondering right now, we are currently still live with our multifamily mastermind group. So if you're like in the core membership and you're wondering where's these multifamily courses, they're still being processed and videoed and cut and manuals made, etc. So it's coming. Don't worry. But this is the benefit of why when we offer a live mastermind group, why you want to be there so you can get real time information. We've already got one person. Uh, who's closing on an eight unit building is pretty exciting. Uh, and we're just going to keep that process going. Understand, you're not supposed to be able to do deals during the fourth quarter, right? But yet that, that 
had nothing to do with it, had everything to do with the fact that you can go out there and get work done and find deals and make these things happen. So the process really doesn't change, Noreen. Uh, it's not going to be wholly different. Uh, it's just a piece of real estate at the end of the day that uh, you, you're still going to have to do the exact same work. You're just going to have to do make sure that your buyer is really, 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 really on board. Because if they're not on board, well, we're going to have a challenge. You're well, you're going to have a challenge. And you probably want to have a number of backups and some contingency plans as well. But you're still going to do the exact same work. This is why a lot of us, once we get used to doing single family, move up to multifamily because it's the exact same work. It's just more commas and zeros. Uh, at the end of the day. All right. Three, Three more questions. All right. Susan, what's a good or great way to ask for his referrals, especially when you have missed out on the deal? I, I was not able to help him solve his problem, but I still like to ask him for referrals. Oh, got it. Um, so Susan, uh, you know, unfortunately we weren't able to figure out a way to help you that's best, but let me ask you a question. Do you think we, we did our best. Yes. Okay. Really? Why? And they're going to tell you. And then after that, it was all, well, here's what I would like to know. If you had a friend or family member that needed the same or similar service that we offer, do you have someone that you could refer them to? And the answer is likely no. Do you mind if you and I develop a bit of a relationship to where I'm that person? No, I don't mind at all. And then you're going to put them in your database. You're going to follow up with them from that standpoint and have the ability to make sure that they uh, know that you are willing to take their referral. So just keep that in mind. All right. So, Mike, it says, have you found a minimum of units that it becomes cost effective to have coin laundry versus no laundry at all? Woo. Okay, got it. So it's not so much a minimum of units as it is a layout of a – it's a two things. It's a – it's a it's a floor plan or a layout, if you will, of how the property is situated. Uh, if you you got to look at the actual positioning of the buildings and the units, i.e., do you have any common area? Uh, even if it's cost effective and you have a 30 unit building and it makes sense. Uh, but if you don't have enough common area or the right kind of common area, then it's going to be tough to add a laundry room. Uh, the other thing is where what is the demographics in terms of. Where's the next closest laundry room? Those two things are going to affect the ability. If there's no close laundry room, but you may not have the perfect layout, it could be worth taking one of your lowest uh, producing types of units, maybe your studio or one bedroom, and turning that into a laundry. Um, however, if there is a close laundry, there it may never make sense ever under any circumstances, regardless of floor plan and layout of the actual um, property in, in and of itself. So those are, it's a couple of, you got to figure out what are you giving up to get the laundry? If you've got to give up a unit, it's probably not worth it. Um, if you're giving up something that's that was non-functional and non-revenue generating, or you're taking something that was previously uh, just taking money, but now it's going to be converted into something that produces money, it's often going to make sense, provided that the the normal laundry room isn't too close. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you go. There's also the idea of adding internal laundry internal to the units. So that that could be a play depending on the type of cu customer that you're serving, Walmart, Target, Nordstrom, et cetera, that where it does actually make sense as well. Has the concept of your investor identity been a challenge? And one of the things that we like to do a lot inside of, you know, our shows and the times where I get to talk with you guys is the ability to, well, just answer questions more in depth. Hopefully you appreciate that as we continue to serve here and make that happen. I, we also got a comment from somebody talking about the amount of content or more importantly, as it relates to single family houses inside the membership. Because I think what it was is that they hear a lot about wholesaling and you hear a lot about uh, apartment buildings because those are obviously things that we do. Well, we also talk about single family houses, especially in the group uh, for for sure. And there's special content for members inside uh, the Cashflow Core membership related to buying and holding single family houses. Uh, of course, uh, it's not enough content in my opinion, and we will be expanding that and you'll have access to getting those things firsthand 
uh, as you're there. And you're always able to ask those questions about property management, team management. I mean, that's been one of the biggest things we've been talking about a lot lately is property management and how to build those teams. Because we have a number of people who are in escrow and many, many dozens of units all across the country and doing various different things. So, you know, if you're finding that you're like, where is that content or it's inside the membership, it, it's not something we have the time or space to necessarily always talk about on the podcast as much as I would like. So it's there. Uh, I'm just kind of communicating that to everybody because we did get that in feedback from you guys. And I just want to make sure you guys knew. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of this episode and see how many more questions we can get answered. So, Elizabeth, Joy, Cody, I don't know what, which name to call you, but I'll call them all. So, um, welcome. I know I, I see that you are a new person here joining us. This is exciting to see new people. So, it says, my company has an empty warehouse they're trying to sell or lease. I'll buy it. Okay, sorry. I should probably finish the question. How can I start the conversation about helping them to find a buyer? Hi, or occupant where when I'm their employee. Ah, so you want to get paid. I see what the issue is. Also, I have a buyer who doesn't fit this property because space isn't big enough, but he's very eager to buy a 50,000 square foot warehouse for his cheerleading gym. Where do I start finding commercial industrial sellers willing to work with a wholesaler? Woo! She's bringing big questions all the way straight out the gate. I'm excited. Okay, well, all right. All right, so Beth is fine. Got it. Thank you, because I'm like, if you don't tell me, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, which name do I read? All right, so here's the thing, Beth. When it comes to the idea of something like a 50,000-square-foot warehouse, uh, I, first of all, I'm excited, because you've got so many uses for that, so many ways, so many change-of-use plays, what we call phased appreciation. It's really, really exciting. You're going to start finding, so first of all, if he's thinking of using this for a cheerleading gym, I'm going to go to the next cheerleading competition around uh, the, your general area. I'm going to go to the Cheerleaders Association of America, if there is such a thing. I'm making that one up. I'm going, it, he thinks it's going to be great for his cheerleading gym. I bet you there are other people who think the exact same thing. So, as far as quote unquote willing to work with the wholesaler, that's not the issue. The issue is, is do they have a need for 50,000 square feet? That's what you've got to find. That's the harder thing to find is do they have a need for 50,000 square feet? This is one of those areas. And you guys don't even hear me say this that often, but this is one of those areas where a realtor is uh, specifically a commercial realtor who specialize in industrial real estate is going to be your advantage. So, and in this case, I, this would be one of those cases where I'd put it under contract. That way I'd have constructive control. You, this is one of those six months to one year escrow period type of deals. And then here's, here's one idea that I would strongly suggest you could do. So you're going to go over to loop, loop, uh, net.com. And I'm going to enter in a location. I don't know where you, like what city you're in or state, but I'm just going to put Florida. And then I'm also going to then put industrial for Florida. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for who are the agents that come up that are either advertising or putting themselves. Sorry, let me do this really quickly. Boom, boom, boom. Because these agents right here, so I'm going to call Rick Bonvi and talk to him about what I what you just said, because Rick should have the information. And then I'm going to look for another industrial person and see, OK, here's another Rick. <laughs> so, so far, we've got two Ricks. We've got Rick Bonvi and Rick Patterson. And I'm going to call him and ask him the same question. And then I'm going to call David and ask David the same question. Somebody's going to be able to help you. I just don't know who. And that's what I'm going to do to figure that out. Because unless you have a direct relationship with the tenant, it's going to be a challenge to find it, to find those larger tenants. Uh, for example, this is how we found uh, many of you guys know, or maybe you don't know. I'll show you the reporter, Porter Herald. Did I do that right? Probably not. Um, hey, there we go. And then we were recently in the paper because our tenant uh, is 
well, and then I didn't spell that correctly, but here it is. So we were recently in the paper because our tenant, um, as you can see here, uh, leased our building and everybody was excited, I guess, about it. So it made the news. This website is weird. It keeps pushing stuff around. So, and again, you don't even see my name and, and obviously you guys can tell that that's not me in the photo. All right. So, but you, you don't see my name till towards the end, uh, over here. But the, the point is, this deal, this came to us because we had a relationship with a person who had a direct relationship with the broker and all this other stuff that gets mixed in there to make that work. It wasn't because I knew someone or I could go out there and put an ad. Now, you could do that, but probably not the best way to get the highest and best use out of your piece of real estate. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's how I'm going to do it. That's how I did it. That's how I suggest you do it. Uh, so there you go. So let's see, where was that? Who's next? Jeff Tripp, it says, does anyone have a checklist similar to the due diligence checklist for making sure that all the cost items have been accounted for? Insurance, property management, permits, and any other costs related to buying a property? Huh. We could make one of those. It's a good idea, Jeff. I like that. So um, that'll be okay. So for, I guess, Jeff, you're also forcing me to let some things out of the bag with that one. Uh, many of you have asked for things like buy and hold information. Um, well, guess where it's going to be? It's going to be in the membership. <laughs> That's That way we don't have to create a whole new course and give you yet another option. It's all going to be in there. The pricing isn't going to change in the sense that from the time you join, Whatever you join at, that's that's your price. Congratulations. Um, that's what you get. And you don't have to worry about or stress about anything of, of those upgrades. You're just going to pay that same monthly. You always have access to up-to-date information uh, so that you have the ability to communicate with us as well as in the Facebook group, etc. I like that one. Scott, can we write that one down? I know what he's asking for because um, basically I can detail and take some of my HUD statements and then just take a number of the HUD statements and we can create a downloadable PDF version and uh, make that work out. So we've made a note of that, Jeff, and we will get that done for you because that makes sense. So would we set up their team for them, i.e. fixing the property, or is that the buyer's responsibility? Uh, that's up to you, Noreen. As a wholesaler, you could set up the team for them because it makes it easier for your customer to buy. So this is the whole McDonald's and how you package the hamburger example, right? So if you just, if McDonald's just gave you a piece of meat, that's going to be tough for some of us to go, you want me to come to your restaurant and the only thing you're going to hand me is a piece of meat. No, they package it by putting some bread on the outside, some lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, cheese, and some of you are already singing the song. So you, you get the point. They package it and then they also package fries with that. And then they also package a drink and they call it a number one and they make it easy for us to order. And then they ask us, would you like to upsize it? You can do as much or as little of that as you as you want. At the bare minimum, you got to provide the meat, which is the house. So it's up to you. It's a total decision. Now, uh, as you follow the information in the deals and discounts course, I'm going to show you, especially as you get down to, say, action plan number 12 you're going to begin to see how I put the entire deal together. You're going to begin to see the entire deal together to in, in its package so that you have the ability to to duplicate as much or as little of that as you'd like. So either way is, go, is going to be pretty good. Um, what does that say, Marvin? I've been working with a realtor on a property in Louisville, Kentucky. How do you go about quickly building a team in an area that you have never been to? All right, here's the quick tip, if you will. This We could call this the ninja secret of the day. <laughs> I'm going to go over to activereen.com. And you said, uh, where did you say? You said Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> I'm like, where? where was that? Louisville. And see what comes up. See who I can find. Hey, look at this. Louisville, Kentucky real estate agents. This is going to be one way that I'm going to begin that process. Here's another way. I'm going to go to National Association of Residential Property Managers.org. And then I'm going to do a similar search, but this time for a property manager. So an agent and a property manager. The property manager should lead me to every other person that I possibly could need in order to effectively run that property. And that's where I'm going to start. So right here on the search for a member, I'm going to search for a member, search by location. And oh, look, I'm going to put in Louisville. 
and Kentucky is the state. And I'm just going to take it within 100 miles and hit search and see who comes up. And we've got four choices. That's better than not. Hey, I like that last name right there. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I'm going to give one of those guys a call. Or actually, I'm going to give all of those guys a call. Because I, I don't know who's going to be great for my company uh, or not. But that's how it's going to start right there. Hopefully that makes sense. Whoop. All right. So... We still have a pre-sent in question. Is there another one? Kyle. Kyle is asking, Jay, I remember you mentioned you were looking for a credit partner on your commercial building. That is true. How do you think a credit partner should be compensated on on the cash flow quadrant and what benefits problems do you listen for? A cash a credit partner uh, is a percentage of the amount of the loan. So say, for example, and I'm just making up numbers, say the loan is $2 million. What you want to do is you want to pay a number of points. Um, yeah, you just want to pay a number of points for the use of their credit, et cetera. That's one way I think it makes a ton of sense. Um, and you're going to listen for the person who understands real estate, understands cash flow, but has no more cash, but has great credit. They got a great W-2. They can PG, personal guarantee, something that makes sense for you. Like in my case, that's why I said $2 million. They have the ability, they have strong enough income to, to support that and then that they have the ability to go for. Now, they can negotiate for whatever they want, and you can give any parts of the profit analysis quadrant that you'd like. But you want to start at a point where you're just paying a fee for the service, right? And then go up from there. And that's pretty much what I'm going to listen for and what I'm going to look for at the end of the day. <clears throat> so uh, what is – Jeff is asking, what is the minimum distance from the units you would say that it, it would start making sense to have – an in-house, two miles. Sorry, it took me a second. It was like an in-house laundry service? That sounds sounded like a maid. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> that sounded pretty good. I'll take a maid right now. Um, no, uh, two, two miles, two miles, two miles. Jay, a few weeks ago, you mentioned polarizing statements. Can you give us some examples? I could, Kyle, if I could remember what I was referring to two weeks ago. Let's remember that I, I let's see if I could even remember what I was saying earlier today. So uh, if you can give me what context we were talking about that in, that'd be great. Uh, Jay, also, I like your thought process a lot. Could you give us a pep talk for facing fears of not having enough cash reserves on hand for a large apartment building? Um <laughs> Uh, what do you, I, I don't want to see a pep talk. You got to, I mean, there's only, you're only going to ever get started. You got to get started at the end of the day. It's, you're not going to make a dollar on a, on any building you've never purchased. As far as being afraid, okay, that's fine. Uh, come up with contingency plans, put them in place. But at the end of the day, take the capital, take the, 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 the course, oh, where'd it go? The, the whole point of the, having the course right here of, um, capital creators course is to give you the ability to raise more capital. So that really shouldn't be much of an issue. Um, you should just go raise more capital if that's the issue that you have and, and give up more of the equity or give up more of the depreciation or cash flow or something that you got to give up in order to get ex access to that until you feel or your CFO feels comfortable. So yeah, um, I mean, at the end of the day, hopefully uh, just have enough to pay the deductible on your insurance, and then you're you're going to be pretty good. Is there another question, Mike? Mike is says working with a seller with lots of problems. That's good on a four unit fire code issues. Great, no tenants. Even better, dollar store area. He didn't notice. He didn't say Walmart. That's funny. Asking is thirty thousand, and she has some attachment to this building for some reason and wants some ownership. She will accept five k down and wants part of the cash flow on top of monthly payments even after paid in full years to come. Thoughts on structuring this? There is no thought on structuring this, Mike, because I don't want her to be a part of your deal in any way, shape, or form, and clearly she's not in enough pain yet. So let the fire code issues continue. Wait till she gets red tagged, and it's on the demolition, and see if she still feels the same way. That's in the follow-up file. Simple as that. Um... Marvin has a question. Like I said, it says, if one unit of the property is used by the property manager, can you write that as an expense to the business? Also, do you consider 12% for a property manager high? Got it. All right. So I'm going to address this in reverse order. 12% uh, high is 12% high. The question is, you always have to ask, because you're asking for a relative measure, is compared to what? 
is 12% high, what services are you getting? For example, uh, I'm working on some transactions to put together a resort internationally, right? Well, in that instance, management could be upwards of 40%. Is that high? Well, I don't know. What are they, what are they providing for that 40%? Uh, same thing with a lot of vacation rentals. It could be high quote unquote, in that sense. So is 12% high? I don't know. What else did the marketplace, who else in the marketplace knows how to serve your customer? Also, remember, you still have to ask yourself, is this a Walmart, Target, or Nordstrom experience that you're creating? And is this a Walmart or Target, Nordstrom property and customer that you're serving? And is this the Walmart, Target, or Nordstrom uh, property manager. You don't, I don't know who you're dealing with. There's too many I don't knows and those unknowns. So 12% could be completely spot on. It could absolutely be cheap. You don't know what you're getting, uh, right at this particular moment. So, um, can you write that as an expense to the business? Sure, Marvin, you can write it as an expense to the business, but that's not exactly the, I would rather have the ability to produce bigger income, especially in a multifamily situation, because you're use, losing the benefit of the cap rate and the velocity on that expense. So let me give everybody a different way of looking at what I just said, because I'm guessing somebody didn't get that. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. You lose one rental unit. And let's just say for whatever reason, this unit rents for $750 uh, $750 per month. Okay. So that's $750 per month that is now gone because you want to write that off. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take that same 750 and all I'm going to do is multiply real fast 750 times 12. So I can be begin to work off of, come on computer or phone. <laughs> same thing, isn't it? <laughs> 750 times 12, $9,000. So this is $9,000. So, Marvin, you want to write off $9,000 per year. Okay, that's great. I don't have a problem with that. However, this is what I do have a problem with, okay? Let's just say, for the sake of example, that income minus expenses, you're left with an NOI that is equal to one half of this number or $4,500 per year. From this one unit, $4,500 per year. And for the sake of keeping the math simple, let's assume that you have a cap rate of 10%. If you have a cap rate of 10% and an NOI of $4,500, what you have effectively given up is $45,000 of value. And I don't want you to do that <laughs> at the end of the day. Yay. Ooh, I got a $9,000 write-off. Wonderful, but you gave up $45,000 to do it. That does not look like the type of exchange I want you to make or that you should want to make. So this is why, you know, you got to think of a low producing unit. I mean, if that's the lowest producing unit in your building and it's the one bedroom, okay, that could work out very, very well for you. It, there's so many questions that go into this laundry room thing that could make it a challenge to figure out per, uh, properly. All right, um, where are we, 54? Okay, so polarizing statement, is that what you're talking about? You said, if, you said you prefer to say, have you ever considered investing in real estate as opposed to have you ever considered increasing? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay, got it. So uh, increasing your income is too general. People have emotions about real estate investing. They have emotions about, have you ever considered in, investing um uh, in stocks, they, have you ever considered, you know, have you ever considered increasing your income? It's just too broad and way too general. So just keep that in mind. All right. I think we have one more question left on the slide. Laura asks, who or where is the best contact to reach out for a list of pre foreclosures also for a probate index? Okay. Got it. So Laura, great question. This is oh, tons of leads coming your way. Boom. Um, the good thing is, is that most of these are index based. Uh, a lot of them vary, it varies from county to county, state to state, country to country. Uh, some countries, I think it's Australia. Some of the information is not, this information is not even publicly available. Uh, so they, they've got to do a completely different process. But for most of us in the U.S., it is publicly available information, and some of it is even available online. The best way to start 
especially with the probate information, just took up probate and the name of the county, probate and the name of the county. Um, uh, and that'll begin you to find how that particular county has done that information. As far as pre-foreclosures, we're talking usually title companies, if they're still allowed to do it. There was a rule recently that prevents some of them for, from providing certain information to investors, et cetera. Uh, so you, you need to check with each individual one of those. But I'll, there are also other websites like, uh, what is that? Foreclosure radar. That's it. Foreclosure radar. So that you can go ahead and begin to see some of the foreclosures in particular areas so that you have the idea of figuring that out. Okay. So I guess they renamed themselves to property radar and hey, it looks, it looks, I see lots of Apple products on their screen. That's exciting. That's exciting. So, uh, keep all of that. Uh, in mind uh, as we go forward. A couple of things to remind you guys about is if you want to make sure your question does get answered, it's better to send it in so that it makes the slides because we will get through those. And what you want to do is I'm looking for, there it is. You want to send in, that into info at cashflowdiary.com. Again, info at cashflowdiary.com. Uh, so that you have the ability to make sure that your questions get in for next week. Uh, obviously, we want you here live too, because then we, as you can see, we'll take the questions straight from the chat box and answer those as well uh, as we continue to go forward. I see some more. Also, Jay, what have you been reading recently? My Bible intensely. Uh, and a lot of information about native advertising and a lot of information about Facebook marketing and a whole bunch of that stuff. Uh, to be is where I've been. See, Marvin Duncan, Walmart across the board, 12 units, all two, one, one unit property manager with the lease must have given that to themselves until 12, 15, loss of 7,500 for the one unit. I would rather rent it. Would I be able to force them out if they have a lease for the unit? It depends on how the contract is written, Marvin. I don't know. Um, yeah, and in a 12 unit building like that, that's too much income to, to, to be given up like that. I just, I, there's just too much income to be given up like that. Um, yeah. Now, if that's 12%, okay, that still could be good because I don't know the marketplace. The question is, is it compared to what, what am I getting for those services? Um, yeah. Jill. Oh, I totally forgot. Let me, no, no, Jill, I got your question right here. Hold on. I just, it did not get into an email. Hold on. All right, so Jill had a question, and I almost forgot about it, and I'm glad she's sitting here watching live. Whew. Um, so she came upon a commercial deal that she needed some help on. So, and, and see, Jill right now is a part of one of our live mastermind groups, so they have a special email and access to me that allows them to get their stuff directly to me outside of this. This is, is come upon, came upon a commercial deal that I need some help on. Nonprofit owner, tradi transitional housing for homeless vets. Okay. An operation for six years, wants to sell lease back 14 years with buyback clause at end of lease. Triple net type lease, wants 800,000 cash, asking 1.7 to 1.8. Always 100% occupied, long-term agreement contract with U.S. government was told HUD cap rates about 5 to 6 off market. Is five to six too low? What other questions should I ask? That's not the question. My, the first question, Jill, I happen to know that you reside in California. Is this property also in California? Because that's my first concern. Is this property in California? Because we, we've got a completely different issue if this property is in California. If this property is in California, it's probably going to be a non-starter the way that you're talking about it at this particular moment. Um. So, Jill, let me know. Uh, Marvin says, I agree. Good. I'm glad that you agree, Marvin. Um, even if you didn't, it's okay. <laughs> yes, it's an OC. Okay, got it. That's um, the, okay, sell leasebacks in California are a challenge to do because they typically violate usury laws. Not saying that you are going to commit usury, not saying that he's not willing and it doesn't make sense. Uh, what ends up happening is that a lot of California real estate law interprets a sale leaseback as a loan, temporary loan, especially if they buy it back and especially if they complain about the valuation, et cetera, et cetera. And on amounts of this high, there, there's, there's too much of that. So in this particular instance, it just sounds like the person has a temporary need for cash. The probably the better answer is going to be a, a HELOC or a second mortgage uh, in some way, shape, or form. So I, I'm 
guessing that's not the answer you wanted to hear, um, especially since you're asking about cup, cap rates, et cetera. Um, and is cap rates too low? Are you Well, you want to, if you're going to buy on the buying side, you want to buy at as high of a cap rate as you possibly can. Again, when you ask words like too low or too high, they're always relative measures. It's compared to what? Compared to other buildings of this type? is the first question I'm asking compared to the marketplace. Now, five to six cap in California is unfortunately probably high, <laughs> you know, uh, because it's in California and especially in Orange County. So, I, you know, the, you've got too many relative measures that you're going to have to look at. Plus, I don't know what operating expense ratios look like on something like this uh, because I'm guessing they're, they're not cheap either and there's going to be labor intensive. And who's actually running the business anyway? Hopefully that has helped uh, all of you in, in various different ways. We've taken care of you for yet another week. Again, just a quick reminder, you can go over to cashflowdiary. Okay, you should be at cashflowdiary.tv and just below the banner, I'm trying to pull it up so that you can see the same thing that I'm referring to. This banner right here, when you click it, It'll take you straight over so that you can begin your trial. You'll get access to the audiobook immediately. You get access to the core membership for seven days, as we've said, uh, then $97 a month, which includes the deals at discounts course that we've talked about, the capital creators. It will have the multifamily information, and it includes a whole bunch of other stuff regarding the profit analysis quadrant, the number one tool you need to raise capital, as well as the market analysis. And you've got to also understand something very, very clearly. The deals and discounts course previously sold for four ninety seven. Capital creators previously sold for fourteen ninety seven. That's one thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars. Okay, uh, as well as the income infusion lead machine. All of these things sold for hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars individually. But now we've collapsed and consolidated all that because we want to reach more people, help create more entrepreneurs, expand our ability to help more people retire uh, and, and make these things happen along with all of the extra coaching sessions, live sessions, uh, the, even the tax lien video, that's just never been released before. Uh, many people have been remarking about how much they love that. And then you still have access to the diary component, i.e. follow me around type of thing. You get to see what I'm up to and what I'm doing. And for those who haven't already, yep, we still have the Facebook group. Boom. So that if you haven't switched over to this Facebook group, you're going to need to do that because the old Facebook groups are going to be shut down. Everybody's going to be right here. We're going to be talking about all all the strategies, all the time, nothing but real estate and business, raising capital and creating cash flow. So you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're a part of the fun as we continue. And then every ebook we've made thus far, including the bonus ebook, you probably also notice there's a buy and hold ebook over there that's called a hint and a really big clue, uh, as well as the networking, the bonus networking guide that we've got. Many people have asked uh, for copies of the presentation that I'm doing at the beginning of the year. So I've been doing presentations. So I do presentations kind of like in seasons, if you will. So right now, this is a copy of that, uh, that you're all getting inside the one price start for a dollar, as I said, 97 a month. Uh, in the not too distant future, you're going to have a student plan. We're going to lay out for you what you need to do first, second, third, fourth, fifth to achieve your goals. But at the end of the day, I'm excited that you choose us to let us serve you inside of your educational goals and ability to go out there and make cash flow happen for you. I, I certainly hope you've enjoyed today. Were there any more questions last minute? No. So I certainly hope that you've enjoyed today so that you have the ability uh, to keep going out there doing the deals. If you have some additional questions, feel free to post them in the Facebook group for those for those of you that are there. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Until next time.